What's going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and today we're going to be looking at how you can become a React developer in 2022. This year we're going to be looking at the roadmap so we're going to be going over all the different steps uh, you need the different things you need to learn such as you know HTML CSS all the basics you need to learn and then some more advanced topics later on when you actually start learning React what else you should be looking at what you should be looking into. So guys without further ado let's get started. Okay guys, so there is three phases to this uh, sort of video. First, we're gonna be talking about, about what you need to learn before you get into React. So before you start coding in React, you need to learn some basic concepts. The second phase is what you need to learn to get started with React. So what you need to learn when you first start using React, the basics, the fundamentals, all that sort of thing we're gonna go over in this video. And then we're gonna be learning what you do once you've learned the basics of React. So where do you go next? You wanna go into more advanced stuff? What are you, what sort of apps you plan to build? So that's what we're gonna go into at the end of this video. So let's start off with the first phase, which is what you learn before you start learning React. Okay guys, so this is going to be a super simple thing you need to learn. You need to learn HTML and CSS. Now, although React doesn't directly use HTML and CSS in ways, it, it, it's using HTML and CSS basically. I mean, it's a web page. They do, you know, React is built for the web, web uses HTML and CSS. You need to learn HTML and CSS. Now, how far you need to learn it depends on what you're trying to build. But if you're just trying to build, you know, applications, websites, uh, web apps, just simplistic stuff. If you're trying to build business model stuff, you should probably learn this stuff in depth to make it as... Uh, as flexible and as powerful as you need it to be. However, if you just want to get the basics and get started in React, you're gonna to wanna to learn uh, basically just all the semantics of HTML. You also just wanna learn about how you can add classes to uh, tags. You're gonna to need to learn about the header properties and a bunch of other things as well. So learning HTML isn't essential, but now CSS. Now there's a bunch of different things you could be learning with CSS and it all depends on what sort of application you're gonna be building. If you're gonna be building super simple apps which have one sort like one track mind sort of applications and one layout page, you probably don't need too much CSS. However, in most cases, you're gonna need these basic things. You're gonna need to learn about basic selectors. You're gonna need to how to actually target things in HTML to style it in CSS. You're gonna need to learn about Flexbox or Grid or some sort of way to position and lay out your content in the grid. Again, if you're doing things in a column, it's all text on the page, it doesn't matter too much, but I suggest looking into Flexbox or Grid because it will really help you out. Flexbox is dead simple and Grid is slightly more advanced but gives you a lot more flexibility with its two-dimensional layout. The next thing to learn about is positioning. So guys, absolute positioning, relative positioning, fixed position, these things are gonna come up. People, are gonna, if you're doing jobs for clients, they're gonna say, hey, I kinda want this stuck to the top so you know when you scroll down your nav bar, it's always there so they can navigate around. Gotta learn about positioning. So don't forget to look into positioning, it will really help you out. And just the final one on CSS is you should look into the units as well. Units are what are measured in. It's how the screen is measured in. So for example, pixels is how many pixels across. So if you want 20 pixels, it will go 20 pixels across. Then you've got M and REM. I'm not gonna talk about those, you should look into them. So the next thing you need to learn before starting React is JavaScript. Now, React is built on top of JavaScript. It is a JavaScript library or framework, however you want. I'm pretty sure it's a library. Um, and basically JavaScript, there's a lot you need to learn with it. Now I'm just gonna go over some of the things you need to learn. I'm not gonna explain them, this is for you to research, but these are the things you need to do. You need to look into variables. You wanna look into let, const, and far, and understand scope. I'll talk about scope a bit later. We've got to look into functions. You want to look into named functions, arrow functions, anonymous functions, and immediate effects functions, which are basically when you call a function straight from an event list. The other thing you want to look into is scoping. So as I said before, with your let, far, uh, const, you want to learn about scoping. Now, scope depend. How do you explain scope? You should research it, but basically, scope in JavaScript is what you're calling. So the this character, you're probably going to need to learn that to do React. The other thing you are learning is objects. Now objects can be referred as actual objects which are curly braced uh, key pair values or arrays. Arrays are still objects, they're objects which ca contain a one track sort of one dimensional, well you could probably make multiple dimensional if you put arrays and arrays, but you get what I'm saying. And another thing you wanna look at is how you can manipulate these objects or arrays by using map, uh, find, 
filter, uh, destructuring, there's a bunch of different things you need to look into, um, but I'll leave that with you to research. Now there's another one which is very important in React and node-based stuff and a lot and few and most of the frameworks they all use this sort of syntax. When you're using Webpack or um, BES build modules and stuff like that, you want to be looking into modules which are import, exports, require. You want to look into all that, how you can import and export functions. So have a look into module, import and exports. Uh, Google it, it'll probably come up with some cool things. Search it in JavaScript, React, search it however you want but that will come up for you to learn. One thing that may crop up is especially when you're trying to create um, functions and you're making calls to APIs, you want to look into promises. Now promises, I'm not going to explain this, but they allow you to wait for um, a response to happen before they return a value and stuff like that. So look into it, promises are really cool. They're confusing at first, but promise you stick with it, it, it becomes simpler as you learn. Here's a bonus topic now. It's not so much needed for React anymore, but you did need to use it previously, and that's JavaScript classes. React used to be class-based. They've moved more to a functional-based system, but it's still worth learning in case you come across any legacy React stuff or people still use class-based to this day, which obviously you're going to need to learn. Another thing is Git. Now Git is a way of managing your code, you, your file version control basically. I'm not going to go over it, but you need to learn Git, probably look into GitHub, uh, Git commands, Git init, Git commit, just how you push in action. You're going to be using that a lot when you're working with React, when you, especially if you're working in a team, you don't want to look into branches and all the other fun stuff that comes along with Git. Now, an essential, a, a, an essential to React is probably going to be using the Create React app live or the Create React app functions. Um, and basically, these are these are straightforward, but they come from the npm pack, the Node Package Manor Manager environment. So you want to learn all about npm, how you can use it to import packages and do a bunch of stuff. Or yarn, yarn is a version or a clone of npm someone correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but yarn and npm are the same thing they just work slightly differently uh, a lot of people prefer yarn i use the npm because i've used it my whole time but have a look into npm it's definitely needed before getting into react so a bonus uh, one on top of all the ones I've just said is deployment. So how you deploy stuff to different servers like Heroku and other ones like that. You want to learn how you can actually deploy your app to a server so you can actually see it on the web and other people can see your applications. It'll be quite kind of boring if, you know, you build an app but only you can see it. So deployment is a bonus. You don't necessarily need to learn it before learning React, but it will help if you want to, you know, deploy stuff and share it with friends, family and whoever else you want to share it with. So, we're going to finally get on to React for beginners, what you need to learn now when you get started with React. Learning React, you want to learn um, the fundamentals, what, you've got to learn what React is, why you need to use it and why you should use it. So what, what sort of benefits does it give you over just writing plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript? So React fundamentals are on top of my list. You go look up Google React JS. It'll probably be the top link, reactjs.org or react.org. I don't know if they've changed it. I think it's reactjs.org. Check it out. It is super, got a lot of information there. You'll be able to learn all what about what it is and what you can do with it. Then once you've learned how to obviously, uh, you've learned what it is, why you should use it, you know, all the, the reasons, why, what, where, where, where would you use it? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you then want to look into development environment. So you're going to need to learn how you can actually set up a React project from scratch. There's a few ways to do this, but my favorite is create React app. I will let you look into this, but you want to look into React uh, environment. So development environments. That can also include your extensions used on VS Code if you use VS Code. Um, that can include your IntelliSense, all that sort of things you want to use, your file structure, how you're going to structure it. There's a lot of different things you can learn. There are some best practices with this and there are some things you probably should do. So definitely look into it. Your development environment is definitely going to be the key thing to keep your workflow smooth and making you produce the best React projects you possibly can. Now, React uses a template engine known as JSX, JavaScript X. I don't know if that's exactly what it stands for. It's called JSX. You definitely need to look into JavaScript or JSX. It will definitely be a benefit. It basically looks like HTML, but super powered. You can add in uh, template little rules. You can add in a bunch of things like strings. You can, you can echo, or if PHP term, sorry. 
you can print to your uh, inside from code from your JavaScript code directly into HTML. Basically, inject uh, variables and stuff like that into your code functions and all that as well. So you definitely want to look into JSX. That is a must for React. <laughs> now, after you've done your JSX, you want to look into state. State is I think React struggles a lot with its state and it's something you definitely need to look into more. You want to look into the best ways to use state. You want to look into how you can use state components such as use state, um, which is a React hook, which we'll cover later. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things you need to look into, but state is one of the most important things about React and it's how you hold information and uh, distribute it across your React application. The next thing is components. Now, one of the best things about React is its components. You're able to create components which you can reuse over and over again. Um, and with how React is, it will basically, you can have a component which you use in hundreds of different projects that just works across them all and it looks good. So components are something you should definitely look, for, look into. It's definitely something React It's needed for a beginner inside of React. Now to go along with components, we want to look into props. Props are stuff you pass down from a parent to a child component, which will then allow you to take the information from parent to child. Look into props, it's beneficial to the development of React. Okay, going on to what we said earlier, we're going to be looking into hooks. So hooks is, well, React hooks are part of the new fun, uh, functional base system they've gone for. Um, and React hooks are awesome. It's basically a way of replacing some things they used to have in the class space now with hooks. You can use stuff such as use state, which is again something to do with a state which you can use to store information, reactive information so it can change. And uh, as that changes, your JSX will change as well. Your render will also change. Another one is use effect, which will help with lifecycle methods and stuff like that, which is my next topic. You should look into lifecycle methods inside of React as a beginner because life of methods such as like when you first launch an app, let's look at JavaScript. So if you've already learned JavaScript, let's think about event listener. So on loads, that's kind of, you're going to be mount, that's called mounted inside of React. You kind of want to learn that so you can know how and when you could, should use different functions and where you should use them. Lifecycle methods are a must for React. It definitely helps out in the bigger project. So that is the end of the React for Beginners. So I hope you've got all those things. So let me just list them off again. React Fundamentals, Development Environment, JSX, State, Components, Props, Hooks and Lifecycle Methods. Yeah, all for the basics of React. I suggest you look into them. If there's anything I've missed and you guys think should be in the basics, let me know in the comments down below. What to learn next? What do you learn once you've done the basics of React? You kind of built, you've already built some React projects now. You've learned it. What do you do next? So one of the most important things and the hardest things inside of React, I think, is data handling. Data handling, state management and stuff like that is definitely something you could look into. Now you might not understand it straight away but there's different ways you can and should do state management. Now one of them is the context API. You should definitely look into the context API. It will definitely help you pass in. Basically let me explain to how React props work. They start off on a top level so you have your parent and if you have stuff in your parent you need to pass down to your children. Let's say you've got a nested child five components deep you need to pass that prop all the way down and then if you want to get something back up that's going to be pretty difficult near impossible so that's where context api comes in or a re something like redux props um lifting props and stuff like that you want to look into state management data handling and the context api they're three things i definitely recommend after you've learned all the basics of react now one thing you're going to need especially if you're building large-scale applications is routing or routing you're going to want to know how you can have uh, like react router how you can have different pages so you've got your home page you've uh different uh, your login page, let's say if it's a login authenticated app, you're going to need to learn how to secure those. So definitely look into routing. And that is, that's what you should learn after React. But there's a couple more things I want to go over. You want to learn more. There's other things you can learn that aren't React but are built on top of React, such as Next.js. Next.js is basically a, a really awesome tool built, framework built on top of React, which really helps you. You should definitely look into that. And one I haven't looked into myself, I think you guys definitely should is Remix. It's something I'm going to look into soon. Remix seems to be new on the block and it looks really good. So Remix, just a like bonus to topic there for you to look into. Okay guys, now the final thing is where to learn. So where can you learn this? Now I have two places for you. You should look at the React.js official documentation. 
Um, also some blogs and some other tutorials by just looking into React. And the next place I suggest, if you don't want to have to pay out for a nice big juicy course, then look at some YouTube videos. There's so many good ones out there. You don't have to pay to learn, although if you want to get a, a jump ahead of the rest, maybe have a look at some paid courses. They may help you out. But here's a good free suggestion. Brad Traversi at Traversi Media's YouTube channel has done React crash courses every single year, and he's probably going to do one for 2022. So you should definitely check that out. His latest one is the... 2021 react crash course i believe but i have no doubts that he'll drop a 2022 one which will be just as good as the rest and it's absolutely awesome so don't forget to check out brad's channel uh Traversy media it's absolutely awesome and guys that is concludes the react roadmap 2022 so i just want to show off my whiteboard i got it the other day just for you know browsing so react 2022 roadmap subscribe uh, anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this format of video I stood up this whole time look I have legs um, and it was fun to do I really enjoyed recording this video so if you like this style of video let me know um, guys I hope you've learned the roadmap what you need to look into how you clean it if you have any questions guys hop in my discord give me a shout say hey I want to learn react but I don't know where to start I'll give you some I'll send you some links I'll send you whatever you need I'll try and help if I'm busy and I don't reply straight away someone else will probably help you in there everyone is so useful so hop in the discord link is down below guys Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do not forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. Leave a comment on the video. And, 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 if you want to support the channel a bit further, you can try out our new memberships on the channel. Memberships really help me out because they allow you to support me in a paid way, not coming from ads and stuff like that from YouTube, which allows me to make more videos, more content for you guys as well as you getting some special features. Now, if you just click the join button below this channel, it will give you the option to have a look at what you can get from becoming a member on my channel. There's badges, there's emojis, and there's a few other benefits there. So go have a look at that down below. Thank you for watching this video, and peace out. I almost fell over. That's probably going to be a blooper. We won't talk about that. I was trying to be cool. It wasn't cool. Don't talk about it. We don't talk about it.